nameless jungle planet, in a forgotten corner of the universe, two forces clash for control. As the hive mind wills it, the horde responds. As the Emperor commands it, so too do the Guard do his bidding. Nameless swarms of monsters lurk and leap. Thundering battle cannons echo and steel dreads grind. This is 40k in 40 minutes, Jungle Warfare. Greetings 40k fans, your host JT McDowell here, and boy howdy do we have a classic matchup for you. Newly promoted Commissar Nick takes on bug enthusiast Dammit Mubin in what can only be called the classic Heinlein-esque matchup. Hey everyone, it's Mubin, newest member of Play on Tabletop, and I'm starting my run through the gauntlet of the Play on team members, starting with Nick, and I'm here to take him on with my Terranids. Mubin brings his high fleet Jormungandr to the table with territorial instincts, giving them the ability to have objectives secured on the big monsters. Mubin has brought a Neurothrope, a Tyranid Prime, and a Winged Hive Tyrant as his Warlord with the Shard Gullet Relic. Three warrior squads fill out his troops. He's got a squad of three Venomthropes, five Zoanthropes, a Maliceptor, an Exocrine, a Tyranifex with Acid Spray, a Tyranifex with Rupture Cannon. Boy oh boy, where is Nick gonna hide? I think the unit that has to do the most work for me to win this game is gonna come down to the Exocrine or the Acid Spray Tyranifex. The Exocrine has consistent strength eight minus four, three damage weapons, so it's good against just about everything. The Acid Spray Tyranifex, because it's gonna be running up, it has the upgrade to give it a four up invul save. It's gonna be there, it just needs to survive and just be a giant distraction of death. Commissar Nick has brought a new force of guard to the table. Guard Nick is back and I'm here to redeem myself. I had a very poor showing in my last game. He has the Cadian Command Squad with Grand Strategist, a Lehman Russ Commander with the Battle Cannon, three troop choices which are all Kriegsmen, two Kazarkin Squads, two Armored Sentinels, both with Sentinel Plasma Cannons. He's got a Heavy Ordnance Battery, a Lehman Rust Squad with a Vanquisher, Executioner, and a Battle Cannon, and a Super Heavy Shadow Sword. That Shadow Sword Volcano Cannon can do some serious damage. Nick's bringing some Guard, and I haven't played against a new Guard yet, so I'm not sure whether this is gonna be an easy run, or if this is a, I got the hardest fight first. Today I'm going up against the Tyranids. They're a strong codex with a lot of strong units in it. Can the new guard codex stand up to it? I'm betting it can, but let's find out. Today's mission is Vital Ground from the Tempest of War deck. Players will score three points for holding their own objective, four for holding a no man's land objective, and five should they hold their opponents as well to a maximum of 12 per turn. In addition, players will score one point for each killed unit up to a maximum of three per turn, making primary worth a maximum of 15 points per round. We're deploying in a Dawn of War long table edge deployment. Will Nick's Shadow Sword even fit? We also have the Hidden Supplies rule in effect, so there are actually four No Man's Land objectives. Welcome here, we're gonna play another 40k and 40 m I've got the guard, I'm back with the guard. I have to redeem myself. Got redemption to do. Who gets to deploy first? Some I do! Pre-game, Mubin is spending two command points on the Jormungandr Tyranid stratagem buried in wait. He's gonna be deep striking two units of his warriors. They'll have to come in outside nine of his opponent. However, that could be really tough against Nick's board presence. Players have decided that for purposes of this match, those large hill-like structures will give cover to infantry should they touch the base of the terrain. However, there will be no penalty to move vehicles or monsters across them. The two big tufts at the edge of each deployment zone will be treated as woods, and that centerpiece is being treated as a ruined building over five inches in height. I'm gonna start with a unit of Krieg Guardsmen. In deployment, I've gotta make sure to use my infantry to screen out my tanks. I don't want them to be able to charge my tanks that reduces their firepower, lets them shoot at less targets, and potentially kills them. I'm gonna put down the Exocrine. Oh, and... so much damage, that thing. Um, next, I'm gonna try another unit of Krieg Guardsmen. These guys are actually gonna go way back here to make a play for this objective later in the game. Acid Spray Tran effects. Just gonna go right Oh, the down. Acid Spray is so scary! I think my Hellhound is actually gonna go down, and it's gonna go down back here. I will go with my Maliceptor next. These guardsmen are gonna go hide in these woods here, giving them some cover. My unit of zone ropes. Put that down next. I'm gonna put down the giant Shadow oh, Sword. Oh, the super heavy. Nick's Shadow Sword takes up so much space that mid-table really is its only spot to be. 
So people made fun of me for my Vanquisher cannon, saying it wasn't an optimal target. So the big gun's gonna kill a guy if it hits and wounds, and it fails! <laughs> so I decided to double down on it and just take a bigger gun. <laughs> I think I'm gonna put down the Venom Thropes next. I'm gonna put one of my unit of Kasserkins, and they're gonna go touching the minus one cover. Hive Tyrant's gonna go down back here, and he's just gonna hide where nothing can see him right now. That makes sense. I'm gonna put my company commander squad down now. So there's a company commander, his Voxcaster, and his flag, and his bodyguards. Tyrant effects with Rupture Cannon is gonna go down back here, where, again, Shadow Sword can't see him. I think the Field Ordnance batteries are gonna go down. Okay. For my next drop, I'm gonna put down the Neurothrope right in between That's everybody character. right there. Vanquisher Cannon tank, I think. Maybe uh, ignore some invulns over here. All right, next unit I'm gonna put down is gonna be my one warrior squad that's not in deep strike. Then I'm gonna put the plasma oh. unit down. My last drop is gonna be my Tyranid Prime, who's just gonna sit back here and join the warriors. I'm gonna put battle cannon over here. Lehman Rust Commander going down. Yeah, sentinels go down behind this rock. <laughs> Lastly, I have a, one more unit of Kasserkin that they have a relic, the Barbagant's Key, uh, which allows them to pick up and redeploy elsewhere during the movement phase. So we've just finished deploying, looking up across the table. If I'm going first, I know, number one, that Vanquisher has to die. Let's see who goes first. Looks like it's gonna be moving. This episode is brought to you by Magnet Baron, your DIY super magnetic home. Magnet Baron uses some of the strongest N52 triple coated neodymium super magnets. They are one of the best places to source magnets and custom tabletop gaming solutions like cool magnetic posable flight stands, full magnetic kits for Imperial Knights, magnet specific tools, magnet kits, movement trays, everything you could want. Check them out at themagnetbaron.com and be sure to tell them PlayOn sent you. Takes up to three command points and movement goes up to two. Movement chooses the Tyranid Primes impaired of this turn, Guidebind, to have exploding sixes and shooting. I actually don't think this is the choice. He can't get close enough to really use it, and I feel he should have gone with the army wide invulnerable save from the Neurothropes, as it will be most effective when Nick has all the guns still to shoot. Neurothrope uses Warp Siphon on the Maliceptor to make him cast better. Tyranid Prime gives that Warrior Squad plus one to hit and reroll ones to wound, and the Hive Tyrant gives the Venom Thropes and Warriors reroll ones to hit. So, first one is a tempting target. This it... one. Come take this one. He's got no prisoners. He's got to kill 30 wounds worth of models. Should be fairly easy. He's also pulled grind them down. He needs to kill more models over a whole turn than Nick does. I'm very curious if you're going to go whole hog and just like charge at me, or if you're going to be a little bit cagey and uh, conservative. As much as I would like to play defensive, I don't have the range that Nick does on his guns. I will advance the Maliceptor. Maliceptor advances, but with a use of Onslaught, he could potentially charge turn one. This Tyrant Effects is going to come out so that he can actually see the Vanquisher. Acid Spray Tyrant Effects is just going to move up to there. That's a fairly aggressive movement for Mubin. He's got to be careful not to overextend, as Nick still has a lot of guns, and he can't take out all of them turn one. So, Hive Tyrant coming out. Whoop. Second phase. Second phase, what do you got? Start with the Maliceptor. He's just gonna smite those guard right in front of him. So he just roll 3d6 and drop one, because the Neurothrope told him to do it better. D3 mortal wounds, not much. One guardsman! A single guardsman. Ah, ah, ah. The only other Psyker I've got this turn is gonna be the Hive Tyrant. He needs to get Catalyst. Yeah, you want that save, I want that you? five up ignore yeah. wounds. Having to spend a command reroll to reroll Catalyst, that's huge, but it could save his Tyrant. Movement is down to one command point. Second phase is done. All right, give me your shooting. Give it to me, All let's see how bad it is. All the is. shooting, Tyrant effects, this is your time to shine. Do it. Rupture Cannon Tyrant effects goes into the Lehman Russ Vanquisher, and it looks like Redemption may not be in the cards for it, because Ignore Invuln Saves is so powerful versus Mubin's army, and he's gonna take it down. Yes. Got the Vanquisher. Nick, 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 what are you doing? Before I take him off the table, yep. I'm gonna do an ability called Vengeful Salute. He's down to two command points remaining, and he's shooting the Maliceptor. He hits on a five. It ignores invuln saves, does nine wounds to the Maliceptor. Oof. That does mean one kill for movement on grind them down, however. So he is going to be down to six wounds. He got close to killing that Toronto Vex. He bracketed that thing with one shot. That's why you bring a Vanquisher cannon. Vanquisher, I think you have redeemed yourself. Well done. Excrin targets the Plasma Cutioner now. 
Lubin spending his last command point in the Tyranid Stratagem, Observer Organism. He's gonna get Exploding Sixes on it now because it's out of range to get the Exploding Sixes otherwise. That's really too bad. So I've got eight shots total. Only two get through, but that takes six wounds off that Lehman Russ. Seven wounds left. So that's the X-Cream done with his shooting. All I've got is left is the Hive Tyrant. Only the big giant tank has a good target. Uh, all of them hit, no exploding sixes. On threes. Oh, three wounds into the Shadow Sword. He's got Knight of Piety that gives him a five up invuln save and he fails them all. 15 wounds from that Shard Gullet Hive Tyrant and he's bracketed the Super Heavy. Wow. So that's gonna be the end of my turn because I'm not in range to do any charges. Yep. End of turn one, I'm feeling cautiously optimistic. A less than stellar turn one, I think. Movement does score a point for a kill. He's discarded Tempting Target. He's got one kill for Grind Them Down, and he's got 14 wounds on no prisoners as we head into Nick's turn one with a score one nothing in favor of Movement. All right, I, on the beginning of my turn, I get a command point up to three. I get a command point going up to one. Nick's tank commander gives out Gunner's kill on sight, so he's going to get to reroll ones to hit with two of his Lehman Russes. Infantry are getting the first rank fire, second rank fire. And then because they all have Vox communication, it actually expands to every unit within six inches. So this unit okay. is also under orders, this unit is also under orders, and this unit is also under orders. Nick's using the stratagem Relentless for two command points. His Shadow Sword will be able to act at full wounds capacity this turn. That's huge, but he's down to one command point. Nick has pulled Battlefield Supremacy. He has to hold more objectives than Movin does. Hold the line, he's got to keep Movin's units away from his deployment zone and capture enemy outposts. Go steal Movin's home objective. That one could be tough. It's time for the Movin phase. I mean the movement phase. I've advanced these guys, which means they can't fire their, their rapid fire weapons. That's okay. Kazakhan squad move up, take a no man's land objective here. The Hellhound is going to move up. I am going to move up a little bit with these guardsmen. Tanks are moving down a little bit here. Just get some clear shots. Looks like Nick is going to use the Barbican's Key Relic right now, and he's redeploying his Kazakhan right smack dead center. This feels like a miss from Mubin and not locking him out, knowing that that was coming. In the shooting phase, we're going to go with these Kazakhan first because they're going to do a command point to overcharge their LAS guns. Okay. Their hot shot LAS guns. So they'll do mortal wounds on sixes. I want that command point back because if I can farm it back on a five up right now, I can do another stratagem that makes them do those mortal wounds on fives. Come on, give it to me! Yes! Oh. Spending that command point immediately on the guard stratagem, ingrained precision, he's now got a mortal wound on fives to hit as well. Feels like a Votan-like nerf might be in order here. I'm gonna split it evenly between the Rupture Cannon Tyranno effects, the Brain Bugs, and the uh, Venom Throw. The pistol is also gonna go into the Brain Bugs. All right, so into the Brain Bugs first. Okay. Three, three mortal wounds plus wounds to save, plus one hit, that is a, not a wound. So three, four up invulse first. Uh, they make them all. Venom into throw. the Venom Throws. Seven wounds and six mortals into the Venom Thropes, and he's wiped the Venom Thropes out. Wowie, wow, wow, that's amazing. So Nick just dropped in a unit of Kasserkin right in the middle of the board, and he just split fired and did mortal wounds and killed all my Venom Thropes, who are giving me my minus one to hit bubble, which was so precious and so good, but they're gone to mostly mortal wounds. And then lastly, the remaining three are firing into the Rupture Cannon yep. to round effects. So he's gonna take his four ups. He's okay. So he takes two mortal wounds. Just two mortal day. wounds, down to 15. I expect this from just about any other army out there, including those tricksy elves. But guard? Mortal wound bombs? Deep striking shenanigans? What is this? Over here, um, yeah. we have a chem cannon that's gonna fire into the hive tyrant. And I kept this command point for a reason. Indomitable monstrosity. Which uh, means? Can't wound it on less than a four. Should be enough to let it tank some wounds. It's got Catalyst, got a four up in Vol. The ball's in its court. It just needs to, just needs to roll for it. D3 plus three shots from the Chem Cannon. It gets three, four, five shots. The only wound that gets through, he ignores. Thanks, Catalyst. Both players out of command points now, but I think they'll agree those exchanges were totally worth it. Heavy Flamer does one shot. All yeah, right, I'm one up. shot for the Flamer. It wounds. Ooh, on a five. Nice one. Four up. One Ooh. damage. On a five up. 
Second casket squad, first rank, second rank into the tyrant now. Takes him down to eight wounds remaining. Ignore none. The tyrant's hurt. This, he's still alive. So there's that, I think. All right, these Krieger here, gonna fire everything into the Malice Scepter. Yeah, six is to wound. More guardsmen take that Malice Scepter down to five wounds left. And then these guardsmen are also gonna fire. They're too close for you to get a minus one on them. Three ups. Oh, he's down to two. Excellent, well done, guys. Battle Cannon, Lehman Russ. Last cannon, Battle Cannon into the Exocrine. Heavy Bolters into the Malice Scepter. Battle Cannon Russ into the Exocrine takes it down to 12. Plasma Executioner is gonna fire his Heavy Bolter at the Malice Scepter. Yep. And his Plasma mm -hmm. at the Brain Bugs. Heavy Bolter into the Malice Scepter. See if I can kill it. I, oh, two auto wounds. Oh my wounds. god, all right. Looking for fours. I kill him with the Heavy Bolter. Plasma's going into the Brain Bugs. D6 plus three shots. <laughs> Looking for fours. One auto, re-rolling ones. Ha! Two autos. Yep. Three wounds! Four up in balls. Oh, Mubin's lost one of his Neurothropes. My tank commander is gonna fire yep. into your uh, Hive Tyrant. Yep. So, I've got the Relic Battle Cannon first. Yep. Seven shots. Uh, looking for four up in balls. Oh, He's okay. come on, okay. Oh boy, it's Shadow Sword time! Las Guns and Heavy Bolters are all going into here. Um, the big giant gun is going into the rupture cannon back there. Okay. Big giant gun first, into the guy back the big there. Big one that matters. Yeah, D3 I'm... plus three shots. Six shots go into the rupture Tyrannifex, and he only hits once. Whoa! It does wound, and it takes 12 damage, so five wounds left. Sponsored weapons go to the Flyrant and manage six damage, and Mubin takes five wounds. He's down to three left. Uh-oh, hot dog. See if the heavy bolters can do it. On fives. Fives. Four up. He's okay. All right. Sentinels are gonna fire both of their, both their plasmas, plasmas into the Hive Tyrant. See if they can't take him out. Overcharged Sentinels into the fly right now and they could take him down. Mubin fails only one save and takes one wound, two wounds left, and Nick takes a mortal. Field Ordnance batteries were a long shot to kill that fly right, so it looks like he's gonna target the zone throws instead. D6 shot each one. Yep. Dice have abandoned me. Woo. One wound though. Zone throws, so four up in balls. Nope, Takes two damage. All right. I'm gonna yep. end my turn and score a bucket full of points. What a round one. Mubin still sits at one victory point. He grind them down has failed as Nick has killed two this turn. Nick scores five points for Battlefield Supremacy, takes him up to seven total points. Hold the line to be scored if Mubin doesn't get close next turn. I was really happy with the performance of my guard this round. I managed to take off some very key units. End of round one. I've only got a single point. Nick's got seven, but it's still too early and there's still a lot of points to score. Both players get a command point up to one each. Mubin gains three primary for holding his own objective, and that's it. Nick has shooed him off the other no man's land objectives. Mubin uses his command point immediately on rapid regeneration and only heals a single wound. That's gonna leave his flyrant still in the bottom bracket. New synaptic imperative, warp siphon, invulnerable saves abound now. I think it's a little bit too late. The ability is? I'm gonna use Will of the Hive Mind on this squad of warriors because they're the only eligible target. The Tyranid Prime will give the reroll ones to wound on those same warrior squad as well as a plus one to hit rolls. Zone Thropes this turn getting to cast on three dice. Oh boy, here comes the mortal wounds. Let's get some new secondaries. Mubin pulls his secondaries. He's drawn raised banners. Doing an action midfield could be tough, but he does have those deep striking warriors. He's also pulled investigate sites, which means he needs to clear those Kazarkin out and won't be able to do the action this turn. Time to move things. Time for the movement phase. You want to shoot some things with them. Oh, absolutely. So Tranfax is going to move up to there. This is a bit of a big swing turn. He's lost so much round one. He needs to hurt Nick back big time here, and it is definitely still within his ability to do so. So Tyrant will move just closer. And this is turn two. This means my warriors get to come in and join the fight. And there's a quite a bit of room in the middle of the table where they can show up. Incoming warriors raise a banner. That's going to score him five. Into the psychic phase. Start with the Neurothrow. He is going to cast Neuroparasite into the Kazakhin squad that's in the middle. Neuroparasite into the Kazakhin squad. Six mortal wounds. Neurothrope doing his job. Well, I just killed six of them. <laughs> and because of my Spirit Leech ability, you are within 18. And I did kill a 
three models yeah. with mortal wounds, he gets to go back to four. But it was that guy that did the ability. Yep. It's the actual Super Smite now. Super Smite from the Zoanthropes wipes the Kazrakan squad with his mind bullets. Onto the Hive Tyrant. He's gonna catalyst himself. Pirate gets a five of ignore damage with catalyst and smites down two more guardsmen. Ah, ah. All right, shooting phase. This is the this is the scary part. So now this unit of warriors who have been buffing for the last two turns get to do finally something. have something to do. Super buff warrior squad is splitting fire. The venom cannons go into the hellhound and it strips two wounds, and the death spitters go to those guardsmen, killing five. I'm gonna go with the exocrine next. Yeah, only target he's got is the Battle Cannon Lehman Russ. Exocrine into the Battle Cannon Russ, and Nick saves two with sixes. Wow, that's huge and unfortunate for Moobin. Rupture Cannon's going next into the Plasma. It's giving me the six. No, how much damage to do? D6 plus four. Ooh. So six damage total. I got one wound remaining. Voracious ammunition, because I won't forget this time. On a two up? On a two up. Voracious ammunition fails. All he had to do was roll a two or more and that Russ lives. Flying Hive Tyrant. Who do you want to shoot at? Ooh, the Hive Tyrant going into the Shadow Sword on fives? Huh, I'd have probably gone at the Hellhound, but that gun is super strong. Manages to do one through to the Shadow Sword and takes it down to 10 wounds. This warrior squad that just showed up. Yep. The Venom Cannon is going to go into into, the air. into Big Boy, and then the two Death Spitters will go into the Guardsman. Kazrakin first. Death Spitters kill two more Kazrakin. Tyrannifex unloads into the Shadow Sword. Can he kill it? Super That's heavy. One. Three shots. Uh, no, you minus one hit. Oh, so four. So nothing hits. Excellent. He's going to unload everything. So he's got his Stinger Salvo as well as the Acid Spray. Into the all tank. All into the tank. Starting with the eight shots from the Stinger Salvo, you yep. are minus one, so I go to fours. Stinger salvos down to nine wounds. And then this is the one that always matters, the D6 plus six acid this spray. This is the acid, yeah. Acid spray now, nine hits, fives to wound, and it's down to three wounds. Yes, it is my bottom bracket. Uh, time to charge things. <laughs> I really want you to fail this charge. I'm gonna start with him first. Charge phase, six inch charge for the Tyrannifex to get in and eight. And then the Hive Tyrant into the poor little guy. You can actually fail on double ones here. But he won't. <laughs> Look at that, it's a seven. <laughs> you saw the one. <laughs> Fighting, you can't interrupt. I'm gonna start with the Hive Tyrant. Seven attacks. Oh, down goes that last guardsman. Bury him with his shovel. He served the Emperor well. Tyrannifex is gonna go next. He's yep. got four attacks. He has Toxin Sacks, which gives him an auto wound on sixes. <laughs> Two. Three five ups to me. Three dead Kazrakin so far. Well, I'm gonna hit you back with my guys. I think that's a good call. Nick claps back, does nothing, but if he fails morale here, Moobin will steal that objective. All right, so one leadership test here. Yep. Six. Oh, yes. That means you're gonna hold the objective. So you lose one. That one guardsman running away is the difference between me holding that objective and him holding that objective. Where's a commissar when you need him? And four more guys, and then I lose no more. So End of turn two. My Neurothrope and my Zoanthropes did exactly what I thought they would. Mortal Wounds galore, clear out that center again. Moobin has scored five points for Raise the Banners, finished No Prisoners to score five, and has discarded Investigate Sites. He sits at a total of 16 points, with six primary and 10 secondary, to Nick's seven total points as we head into Nick's turn two. Nick goes up to two command points to Moobin's one. So at the beginning of my turn two, there's three units that I need to try to kill. There's a Tyrannifex that is threatening my back line right in the face of that Shadow Sword. There is a Hive Tyrant that's buffing his army that has only three wounds left. And there's a unit of Tyranid Warriors that is holding an objective that I need to take. He's pulled Investigate Sights to do an action in the middle of the board. Blood and Guts, he needs to kill three units in combat and defend Stronghold. Hold his home until next turn. Nick issuing his commands here. He's giving move, move, move to those guardsmen. They're gonna be able to move eight now and score him investigate sites as that center terrain is being played as a ruined building. Tank commanders again say gunners kill on sight. His tanks are gonna get reroll ones to hit. Nick spending two command points again to make that shadow sword act at top bracket and he farms one back. Still at one command point. Moving phase, I'm gonna fall back with these guardsmen here. Okay. And they're gonna just move, they're gonna shuffle to the side. As expected, Nick takes a dive bomb into the bio pool mid table and is gonna action there to score himself five points. These guardsmen are gonna move up six and then they're gonna advance All and right. they're gonna be within range of this oh, objective. Yeah, I guess he's a nine. 
The Hellhound could potentially take that objective away from the Fly Rent. Oh, for a miss, consolidate, move, moving. I am now on the objective and outside of one inch so I can flame things. Yep. I'm also 12 inches away from some juicy Tyranids to kill there. No, I'm still holding that objective though because I have OPSEC and Currently. He's five. Currently. He's fine, he'll manage. And then the Sentinels are gonna move up yep. to get prepped for next turn. So he's gonna move up. Battle Cannon looks to take pot shots at those zone throws. And the Plasma is gonna move up here. This is one shot. And yep. the commander's also gonna move up so he has shots here, because I think I'm gonna need them. So if I can do this right, I will control five objectives again. But I've gotta kill these Tyranids warriors off of here. Yep. I have to kill this, which is this the job yeah, of Shadow Soldier. Yeah, it's one job. And I have to kill this. If I can kill those three units, I'm in a pretty strong position. Things. I'm gonna start with the Shadow Sword. I need to kill this. The big giant cannon and the Laz cannons. Yep. Are both gonna go? Are all gonna go into this surround effects? Surround effects. Yep. All the heavy bolters, though, are gonna go into this hive tyrant right here. Shooting phase now, and Nick has decided to split fire a little bit. It does make sense, though I am morally and ethically opposed to it. I do hope it works out for him. Before you start shooting, I'm gonna spend my last command point. <laughs> Transhuman on the tyrant. <laughs> of course you are. D3 plus three shots. Give me back. Oh yeah, six Ooh, shots. Six shots. Of Matt says I do this. Maybe. On twos. On twos. Oh, there's two ones. I no. can save them all. I feel. You I, failed. I, I you failed all them all. all. You failed take all. twelve times three. I overkill you so badly. Oh. But yep. Then all the heavy bolters fire into here. Bolters firing back. The flyrant saves the bolter wounds. I think Mubin is really dreaming that it lives on. But if it can just keep taking shots, he's going to be okay with it, as it means Nick won't be killing other stuff. We're going to go with the plasma executioner. It's going to fire all of its guns into just the warriors. Just okay. the warriors. D6 plus three shots. Warrior goes down to the plasma cutioner. I'm gonna go with uh, the field batteries and they're gonna fire into the warriors right now. Two D6 shots. Sixes. One more dice. So with that in mind, I'm gonna then split fire this tank. I'm gonna shoot his battle cannon at the brain bugs. Okay. I'm gonna shoot his heavy bolter and last cannon at the warrior in front of him. Okay. Last cannon into the tyranny warrior. It hits and it auto wounds. Oh, yeah. This four damage. No, he's dead. Yeah, I got him. Oh. Battle battle cannon was going into the brain bugs. Yep. D three plus six. I can reroll ones. Yeah. On threes. Four up in balls. Three wounds at um, minus two. You're just gonna kill one more. I'm gonna go with the chem cannon. Yep. The heavy flamer is gonna go straight into the tyrant. The tyrant. Okay. The chem cannon is gonna go into these warriors yeah, right here. The chem cannon in here, D3 plus three shots. Yeah, six shots. Four wounds with the chem cannon into the warrior squad and kills what? Interesting. And then the heavy flamer yep. into the tie pirate. D6. Again. It's a wound. Four up. He's okay. That's two sentinels. I'm gonna fire both into the hive tyrant. Plasma sentinels into the fly right now. Only two wounds and movement saves them all. He's okay. <laughs> all right, well, then it goes back back up as right here. And yep. everything's gonna everything go going into to the hive tyrant. But, so I'm gonna yeah. fire the, the tank commander into the tyrant. Everything into the tyrant. It's minus one from the distance. All right, battle cannon gets. Six, seven. One auto wound, three hits. I saw a catalyst. Ah! Oh, I feel three of them. <laughs> How much damage? Um, it, this is the Relic Gatekeeper. It's yep. three damage each. Oh. You got close. I got close. I got four. This is big because now I've lost the ability for Synaptic Imperatives. All right, that's huge because I now hold five objective markers. All three are dead. The way is clear to his back line and his most important units. Moving out of command points, Nick still sits at one, and we have a score of 18 to 16 with two turns complete in favor of Nick. He scored Investigate Sights this turn, he still has Defend Stronghold, and he's discarded Blood and Guts. On to Moving's turn three, let's see what Moving can do. So, start of turn three, I've got so many things that are just so close to dying. Up to 19 points for Mubin as he manages to score three on primary. I just need a bit more killing power from my army. They're just, some of the dice rolls, when it comes to that killing effectiveness, just not doing it. He's up to one command point to next two. Neurothrope is gonna make the zone throps cast better. The warriors are gonna get plus one to hit and reroll ones to wound. And then my secondaries. Mubin is drawn, bring it down. He's got to kill that three wound shadow sword. 
Secure No Man's Land, hold two objectives in mid-table, and Battlefield Supremacy, hold three objectives and more. That is possible, but difficult. Movement phase. I mean, movement phase. <laughs> Movement phase doesn't have much in it for movement. He's really just got to get position to shoot and do a lot of work. Coming to play in the digestion pool. Be within three to keep character protection. Neurothrope's going first again. He's gonna go with Neuroparasite. Looking for a seven. Psychic phase time and mortal wound time. And boy, oh boy, he's wiped that squad in the center out again. Into the shooting phase. Shooting phase. Oh. Those two warriors on that objective are going to take their death spitter shots before Kazakhin. His warriors are shooting in that Kazakhin squad, only managed to do two wounds. Oh, that's unfortunate. This squad of warriors is going to unload everything into the Hellhound. I'm going to start with the death spitters. That back supercharged warrior squad fires at the Hellhound and strips it down to eight wounds left. Tyranid Prime with its death spitter as well. Looking for twos. Yeah. And then fives, because only strength five. Uh, nothing. Rupture Cannon, Tyrant Effects. Only has Rupture Cannon shots into the Battle Cannon tank. Rupture Cannon into the Battle Cannon Russ, re-rolling the wound with his last command point, and he succeeds! But Nick saves on a six! I save it! Oh, come on! Yes! Just for that, I hit you. I'm gonna roll a two up. I did. Voracious uh, ammunition? Yup. Alright. Three mortal wounds, take that. <laughs> Seven wounds remaining on that tank. Exocrine's the last shooter I've got left. I gotta bring him down. Time to shoot the Shadow Sword and try to get his bring it down points. D6 plus three. For fives. On fives? All right, so I've got to save all of these. You gotta save all of these. On Nick. fives. Don't do it. Don't do it to me. I save one. Does he explode? Boom. <laughs> Boom. <laughs> no. no. Shadow Sword goes down, but. My favorite stratagem is back again. Vengeful Salute! Nick spends two command points to fire his turret weapon with Vengeful Salute. He does not farm either one of the back, but he does get to shoot with his Shadow Sword as it dies. That Exocrine has 12 wounds remaining. All I need is one wound to get through, and I will do 12 damage killing that thing outright. Killed Vengeful! It. D3 plus three shots, I get six shots. Fives to hit. One hit is enough. Can he wound? He does not! Oh no! That was huge! Oh, oh, and I don't have any command points to re-roll it! You, sir. You. <laughs> no! It's a, it's, a, it's a frickin' two! Unfortunately, that will be it. Movement sits at 31 total points to Nick's 23. Nick did score Defend Stronghold that turn. However, Movement has managed to bring it down Secure No Man's Land and his discarded Battlefield Supremacy. He's got 20 secondary, 11 primary to be 31 total points to Nick's 15 secondary and 8 primary to be at 23 as we head into Nick's turn 3. Each player gains a command point. Nick scores 7 points on primary to make our score at the top of 3, 31-30 in favor of moving. And then my secondaries, this will actually probably make or break the the game, if these are poor for me. Nick's pulled Area Denial, Extend Battle Lines, and Secure No Man's Land. Talk about a great draw. He should be able to score all three of those for 15 secondary. This could be a big swing. Tanks again will get Gunner's Kill on sight, so they're re-rolling ones to hit. Nick's spending one command point and Relentless to make his Battle Cannon Russ act as if it was unwounded. And he gets it back, so he's still at one command point. All right, so these guardsmen are gonna move up. You guys are gonna go up to hug the wall. I need to try to get in the center. I have area denial. I want to try to take the center objective and clear them out of the center, out of 12 inches from the center point of the map. There's two units in the center. I only have one unit that can really do it. So I'm going to take my commander tank and just charge right up the middle. Gotta love Nick with his sound effects. These guys are actually going to move up here. Get within 12. To get within 12 for rapid fire. All right, so I'm going to start off the shooting phase with my field cannons. They're going to go yep. fire. Into those warriors. These warriors right here. Ordnance batteries are going to soften those guys up first. So looking for five. Not a five. All right, two damage. These Kazakhans are going to fire into these guys here, these warriors. Kazakhans now wipe them out. Wow. Hellhound's chem cannon goes into the warriors. Mubin's using reinforced hive node to reduce the incoming damage by one, and that's gonna save a model because of that. Only losing the venom cannon. Not a bad trade for one command point. Kree guardsmen, 
Firing everything into this ex Exocrine. Okay. They've got a plasma shot. The Exocrine takes a wound for a brave guardsman. So one damage, and then all the las guns. Yep. Six is the wound! Four up. <laughs> I got one! Take another wound. Good job, guardsman. Battle Cannon, gonna shoot everything, including his Heavy Bolters and Last Cannon, into the Exocrine right here. Battle Cannon gets. Battle Cannon Russ takes down the Exocrine. Kaboom! Let's go with the Plasma Executioner. Okay. Into the Brain Bugs, into yep. the Neurothropes. Fours? Oh! Plasma Executioner now, thank goodness for Relentless, but Mubin saves them all. Sentinels into the Brain Bugs. D3 shots each. One, two, three, four, five. Four up involved. No! Two damage. Commander Tank is fire fire everything into... Kill those damn brain bugs. Into the brain bugs. Survive! Battle Cannon! Oh yeah! Woo. Two wounds. Oh. I make three of them. Three damage each will kill one, the wounded one, and the other one will be down for one wound. So, wounded one. Heavy bolters. I don't get to re-roll the frickin' ones. Yep. Four of involves! Oh, I feel two. Another one bites the dust. So another one bites the dust and another one down to two wounds. All right, that is the end of the shooting phase. You know what? I'm actually going to charge you with my Lehman Rust Commander into the last Neurothrope. Yeah, I'm in. You got here. Nick using his last command point on Crush Them so that Lehman Rust Commander is going to hit on threes and potentially do mortal wounds. So six attacks, hitting on threes. One auto wound. Let's see if I can wound. He's okay. You know what? He's just gonna headbutt you now. Yeah, smack me in the head. He headbutts you. <laughs> Looking for a five. <laughs> no, he doesn't. Well, that fight phase was a bit of a wash. Nick manages to score extend battle lines and secure no man's land for five points each. He has yet to score air denial as Mubin has units in the middle. That puts his total to 42 points to Mubin's 31 points as we head into the top of turn four. Turn four, the game is getting close this to an getting end. really close. Both of us are very bloodied. I've got some very almost dead tanks. Yeah. You still have a giant rupture cannon. I do have a giant rupture cannon. But you are kind of feeling low on troops. Do you think you got this? It's gonna be a tough one. It's gonna be a tough one. But you're one. not out yet. Not out for sure. Let's do it. Turn four. All right, Moomin, what do you got for me? Okay, start of Battle Realm 4. Both players up to a command point, and Moomin only scores three on primary. Nick is really choking him out of that. The Tyranid Prime is making the Warriors better yet again. The Zone Throp is going to be better. Moomin has pulled Area Denial, so he too needs to clear out the middle and hold it. Blood and Guts, kill three in melee, that's gonna be real hard now. And Assassination, kill a character. Well, hello, Commander Lehman Russ. So we've got Area Denial and Assassination. If I take out that tank commander and those three Kasserkin, I get 10 secondary points. Like that. Should be super easy to do. <laughs> so, movement phase. This Tyrann effects. So he's just gonna turn around, waddle up to there. The Neurothrope. Neurothrope moves up to the middle. Lehman Russ is gonna get some mind bullets in his grill. I'm gonna give up my home objective here. Potentially. But if I can steal that one away. Psychic phase. I'm gonna start with my neuro throw. Yep. He's actually gonna start with a neuro parasite into that guard squad. Gets it with an 11. I hit none. Yeah. I couldn't roll higher than a three for this neuro parasite roll. But the caster can survive. Time to do some shooting because the neuro throw couldn't quite deal with them. Yep. They're the gonna two try warriors yep. are gonna yep. try yep. and kill those carskin. Can I do this? Three three rolling ones. Save it. Save it. Oh, the big Rupture Cannon. Into the, into do the it all. tank? Yep. Yeah. So Rupture Cannon's gonna go into the Commander Tank. Yeah. Movement shooting the tank now, spending his last command point to reroll the hit, and he wounds with both shots. Nick needs sixes to save and fails both. 12 damage. All right, does it explode? Ooh. It does not. Uh, so I am going to instead take Commanders down, but once again. Because it didn't go, boom. Vengeful salute. Nick again using Vengeful Salute for his last command point into the Neurothrope. Can he down it? He does! You see that, Shadow Sword? That's how you do it. That's how you kill something right in front of you. And then the eight shots into yes. the Plasma Executioner. So as long as they hit. So on fours. And then winning on fives. Like for this. Nope. I'm so fine. on a two up. Get a one, get a one. 
I got a five. Ah, uh, okay. It's one wound left? Yeah, I just got one wound yeah, left. Yeah, so just for the sake of it, I rolled two. Okay, does he explode? He does not. That's two kills for Mooba. Well, I have one tank left. Now, because of these guys, you didn't manage to clear me off the center. Yeah, this this pretty much seals the deal. There's a teeny tiny bit of hope. If the Tyrant effects and the Exocrine survive, I might have a fighting chance here. But it's a slim chance. End of that turn sees Mubin discard blood and guts, score five points for assassination, but those Kazrakin holding on has meant that he does not get area denial. We sit at a score of 41-42 at the end of Mubin's turn four as we head into Nick's turn. Nick scores seven more on primary to take him up to 25 primary, 25 secondary, and put us at a score of 50 to 41 in his favor with both players having a command point. Nick draws raised banners. He needs to do that on an objective in no man's land for five, storm hostile objective, flip an objective away from Mubin, and he still has airy denial from last turn. Move, move, move! To these guys over here. Feels like a bit of a mop-up mode for Nick here. Moving can still win this, so Nick's gotta be mindful of what he's shooting and make sure to close this out now. If I can kill the Zonothrope and the Tyrannofax, I've pretty much got this game. These guardsmen are gonna move up here. Just gonna pepper that thing with last gun shots, not go too close. This Flamer's tank's gonna move up here. Yep. And these guys are gonna go up here so they can see your guy in the back. Uh, shooting, I'm actually gonna start with these last cannons. Yep, or, sorry, sorry last guns. hotshot last guns into the Neurothrope right there. Fire! The brain bug. Only two hits and one wound at minus three. Four open save. He's <laughs> Then these field cannons are gonna fire straight into there. Boom. <laughs> two D6 shots. So on fives, two. Four up invuls. Ooh, doesn't make either. Oh. Zoanthropes go down to shooting. Then we're gonna do flame, chem cannon and flamer into these guys. D3 plus three shots. Oh yeah, six shots. Six hits. The chem cannon from the Hellhound and Flamer to the Warriors, buh bye Then we're gonna go plasma shots right here into that Tyranid Prime in the back. Reinforced Hive Node for moving here, out of command points, but that Prime lives with four wounds remaining. Battle cannon. Point the right way. <laughs> Gotta angle the turret up a little bit so we can arc over top of that wall. Blast cannon. It hits an auto Ooh. wounds. Five up, because he has a two up armor. The Lehman Russ takes down the Tyrant effects with Rupture Cannon, that could sound the death knell. Nick's turn four. He's killed the X-Crane. He's killed the Tranfix. He's killed everything. All I've got left is that one Tyranid Prime sitting in that corner over there. Yeah. And in Nick's turn four, he scores airy denial, doesn't raise banners, but Storm's hostile objective to give him 35 points on secondary with 27 points on primary, that's gonna put him to 62 and Mubin only has the Tyranid Prime left. So that's actually gonna be your final. With paint scores, our final score is 72 to 51 in favor of this episode's winner, Commissar Nick. Well, thank you for a fun game, Mubin. It I was appreciate a blast. That was awesome, thanks man. Congratulations on your victory and condolences to Mubin, but hey, it's all biomass in the end. What an absolute bloodbath. The carnage and destruction really felt like a classic guards versus Tyranids matchup. This time the guard held, but the hive mind never sleeps. Special thanks to both our players and this episode's sponsor, Magnet Baron. For all your magnetic basing and weapon swap needs, Magnet Baron has you covered. Make sure to check out their link in this video's description, and while you're checking stuff out, check out our Patreon as well. With a fantastic Discord, as well as exclusive shows and early access for YouTube members and patrons, your support means we can bring you more and more content like this. Thanks again for watching, everyone. As always, this is JT McDowell saying, until the next time we see you in the far-flung future of a grim dark universe, play on. Finally, we have a guard victory on the channel, and I feel very good to, I, I feel like I redeemed myself from my first game. So playing against the new guard was pretty interesting. They've got a few neat little tricks now that I could be a little bit more wary of that I wasn't aware of. Um, but thanks, Nick. Now I know. I took a lot of advice from some of our folks on our Patreon and Discord. They were able to give me some great advice on how to build a great list. Thank you guys for helping me out. And. It was an absolute bloodbath. Though, I mean, for the guard, that's just acceptable losses. Good luck, Moomin. As an end, I salute you.